guys, big thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. AG1 is an effortless daily habit with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. You end up eating gas station food or some junk food, this stuff can help you fill the gaps in your diet. And it's as easy as this. You grab your AG1 bottle, rip open your travel pack, dump it in your AG1 bottle. There we go. We're gonna add in a little bit of water here. There we go. And then, you know, I like to come up with something really simple to just get this shaken up nicely. Today, we're gonna use this Sawzall. Like I said, just really simple and easy process here. You don't wanna make it too complicated. There you go. Careful you don't turn it up too hot. You may end up losing the bottle. See, and then when the tape splits, that's when you know you're done. All right, so then just pop it open. Everyone in the comments always says I didn't drink it. So just put a little fast forward there. If you're a wimp about bad tastes, I think you'll actually like AG1. This is one of the best tasting nutritional beverages I've ever had. Guys, your nails are gonna grow fast. Your hair is gonna grow fast. You're gonna have all kinds of energy. I'm telling you, you'll notice a significant change in your health when you try out AG1 and get this routine going. And if you visit drinkag1.com slash Cletus, which that link is in the description below, AG1 has given my community a free one year supply of vitamin D and K and five free travel packs. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Let's get to the live action. Hell yeah. Yeah, brother, you're on the Please Me For On YouTube channel. All right, guys, well, we didn't get 500,000 likes. Right now, we're like 350,000 likes. Sam's right staring at me. The decision's in my court to buy it. I'm not in a position where we have to buy the Rat Rod Supra. But today, we're gonna rip this thing on level five. So, just slide right on in here. We have been given permission to turn this knob one, Two more clicks to the right. That's maxed out. That's the nitrous stuff there. So we're warming it up and we're gonna take it out on the road and we're gonna put a couple more cameras on the gauges and stuff like that so you can really see what's going on. This thing was insane the other day. Now we're going up two more levels. I have no idea how much of a difference that's gonna make, but we're gonna go find out. So uh, we put some more Ignite 85 in it and I guess that's all you do. It's a street car. And I guess it doesn't need it. How much more power is it gonna make? No idea. I have no idea. Victor just said try it. Are we using that nitrous you talked about? Not using any nitrous. Okay. I just saw the buttons. I don't even know. I haven't even seen a bottle mount, so it might just be equipped for nitrous. But, you know, for today it's just not boost. So. I might pass. I'm a little scared after last time. Oh, really? <laughs> Come on, dude. You gotta feel the boost. Actually, I do want to take Jack stand. Yeah, he got so, ripped off. Because this thing's just a ripper, dude. It's Certified something everyone ripper. should experience. Hit it, Jack stand!
Atlanta. <laughs> Dude, that thing started just yeah! that is at third and fourth. With <laughs> a 15 inch wheel. On a pro. That's Woo! a 275 pro on the back. That was, that was rowdy. That was insane. Dude, this thing has such long Woo! gears. I think pulls forever. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's impressive. This is not a car for a uh, casual like street pull. No, <laughs> there ain't nothing casual about spinning fourth gear. That's the type of street car to put you in jail, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well the thing is, is like, it didn't spin down low and forth. It spun up top and forth. It's <laughs> <laughs> a half spin up here. accelerates while spinning in the top of the gears is insane. I bet the best part about that is that that's not all of it. No. <laughs> top of third and fourth spinning. So on the second pole we hit a safety. So I think that it's still not fully unleashed. I think it, what's happening is trying to do the poles back to back. There's probably an intake air temp safety or something. Yeah, something that's like, no, no. Because it makes a boost for a second and then it just shuts me down. Yeah. That's why we couldn't use setting five the other day, but it worked on the first one. Yeah. I mean, we were, oh, it worked. We were screaming on the first one, <laughs> yeah, but then it, it, said, sure. it said, nah, so we must still be hitting other safeties, which we can turn all that off when we own it, but I'm, I'm kind of glad they're there for now. All right, it's home. I don't get how it looks like that. Like if the C7 made that much power, it would spin. Oh yeah. I guess it's just the suspension combo on this thing. I mean, it does have a very gangster set of coilovers. Yeah. I mean, it's got a serious set. That's that, that's that looks 90s. Like it pulls pretty hard. It cut out on the second one. Oh, it did? Yeah. But the first, first one, one was like, <laughs> Everyone's been asking about Ruby, guys. Here she is. Here's the deal. She's just sitting here. Great ripper. But we took the engine out because we had the head gasket issues and we just kind of, you know, that setup, it's just limited. So we've been waiting to put a different setup in here. And, you know, we talked about doing the blazer combo, but now the blazer's back together and we're just torn, you know, do we put a big block in it? Do we do a naturally aspirated nitro setup? I don't know. Just put it up there. James wants to hang it <laughs> from the rafters. Here's the deal. She does need some work because the rear end and that whole nine inch thing back there is just wore out you know our bushings are wore out our axles are pretty beat up everything's a little tore up so she's on standby but guys don't worry ruby's not going anywhere it's not like we're dropping her off at the dump i'm not gonna let james hang her from the rafters she'll be back soon enough and look at this all right guys in other news we have finally have a completely fixed up toter home looks brand new big shout out to right trailers i mean this was all cooked you can see the uh Awnings are gloss black now. Those are looking yeah. brand new. Doors looking brand new, dude. All the trims got fresh coats on it. It's just looking clean. Even got, got tire shine. See the right trailer, dude. There they are. They threw their sticker on. Well deserved, because they had to take a lot of panels off of this thing. Shined up, Ooh, brother. Ooh, that fresh looks good. Back there. Our buddy Doug Cook broke these door handles first week we owned it. Those are fixed. <laughs> Shout out to Doug Cook doing that we had to get new speakers our speakers were bogged out so we got some fresh sony's in it now all the damage primarily most of the damage is up here that's all fixed but on the toter home you guys saw we got black wheels now mm. looking clean black everything's blacked out now even this renegade logo blacked out blacked out the steps blacked out the front wheels blacked out the grill so Ooh. even though you know it costs a little more to get it all blacked out Really, we were just there to fix it from the hurricane damage. You know, we just had to go all out and make her shined up. Church, so. church up a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty happy. 
I guess the first time people will see this again will be Bristol. September 2nd and 3rd, we'll have this baby up in Bristol. She won't be out for a while, but at least we know she's good now. And obviously we've upgraded the building since last hurricane. So she's hopefully safe. we don't have any hey, this one don't come major nah. issues. Yeah. And as for the rat rod Supra, not sure if we own it yet. You know, you guys had to get to 500K to make it a sure deal. We only had 350, which is still awesome. But now I just have to lay awake at night deciding whether or not we want to keep that car in the fleet. It is pretty gnarly. Speaking of stuff that just got fixed, Twisted T. Here's a montage of that getting a freshened up 632 put in it. Well, we were doing our slips episode and uh, this thing blew up in the burnout box. <laughs> We got a motor for it, but before I pull the engine and get all that stuff out of the way, I want to pull the valve covers off and just make sure that there's not, you know, a bent rocker or push rod or something broken, spring. Who knows? It could be something stupid. Well, we heard some stuff. Rocker right here is off. This push rod got absolutely obliterated on both ends. It's just smashed flat. Same with this push rod. That one's stuck in there. That one's probably pretty bent if I can't just pull it out by hand. So yeah, we're definitely gonna pull this out. There's metal everywhere in this thing. Out with the old and in with the new. So we got basically the identical engine, another 632 from Blueprint. We're gonna pull this thing out, throw it on an engine stand, transfer all the stuff from that to here, get this guy in there, and then we should be ready to rock. I don't think that's supposed to be there, guy. Motor might be a little worse than we thought. When your intake valve hits the bottom of your uh, carburetor, it's probably not good. What the heck you guys got going on here? Well, JT took this thing apart and it had a tulip. Does it look and good that, to you? Well, no, it's got an extra tulip in it. <laughs> See here? And that's yeah. not a April showers bring May flowers. It's actually a tulip. <laughs> it looked like it might've come off April the April showers bring May shit. Yeah. All right, so we got the 632 out of Twisted T. You know, it, it fricking, I guess, dropped a valve during the it had burnout that I tried to do in the slips episode. Well, what happened was mm -hmm. failed to realize that this thing had the cheapest push rods in these little press in balls. Oh, were we missing some so of those? So all ah. the limiter action popped them off. Ah. So then you had a whole lot of dun -dun -dun going on, which yeah. then had uh, this happen. I did not remove this. This is your broken valve. It, no, it uh, shot the locks, clean out the keeper. Oh, so then it dropped the valve. So then there. it dropped the valve, but luckily the intake valve went up instead of down yeah so it went up and was in the intake oh so with that i was like well let me just it takes five minutes to pull the head off let me pull the head off because i know we have a spare set of these from yeah. when we had this motor and, and toast toast and uh the piston did get hit a little bit but nothing's bent or broken or cracked so sam you think we can run that I clean up these good. edges make it smooth right here's on the hard part but that's a, that's a reinforced big time underneath okay. that so you're okay yeah. All head right. gasket, cylinder head, because everything else, look at this side. This side's perfect. Yeah, hey, that's good. So well, we should just get a set of push rods. Yeah, a set of push rods, one head gasket, a little bit of labor, and she's back to being a 630. Fire me up. Hell yeah. All right, guys. I mean, we just got to think it through. Do we want the Supra or do we not? We can keep it and, you know, save it for a rainy day. But outside of what we just did, doing poles in it, I don't know what we're going to use it for. It's a great street car for someone who's going to really take it out. Don't want to let it go. I mean, I feel like we'll never have the opportunity to get that car again if it does go away. So maybe we just throw it in the old cleater museum. <laughs> <laughs> which, we'll, which we can Might as well buy up. some Picasso. So we can spin up. We'll spin up a museum the as the, the first purchase is the Supra. I don't know. 
the, you know, can we get like a government grant for that just since we have think, a museum? Just think, you open those glass double doors like this, right when you walk super. in, Ruby upside down from the rafters, <laughs> rat rod super. Yeah, Damn, would you come? Would you guys come to that museum? That's going to be the deciding factor. All right. Other than that, everything's doing really good here at the shop. We're just spinning back up into our race car content. You know, we had the jet boat trip and all that good stuff. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching New for Dale. We'll freaking see you later.